was very well known in our region and uh, this part of the world. Uh, Professor Chire is the founder and CEO of the Taipei Fertility Center. He's an honorary professor of the Taipei Medical University and a president of the Taiwan Endometriosis Society. He's a board member of the World Endometriosis Society. And he was the director of the Center for Productive Medicine and Science, Taipei Medical University Hospital in Taiwan, China, from 94 to 2019. And he was our president, the Asia Pacific Initiative on Reproduction, 2016 to 2018. Professor Chire has been an invited speaker in numerous grand conferences around the world with uh, over 210 published peer-reviewed papers in our field of reproductive medicine. So I would like to yield the floor to Professor Chire to give his presentation. Professor, please. Thank you, uh, Angela. And uh, very nice to see you again. And also Professor Osamu Tsutsumi. Mm -hmm. uh, today, uh, can I see my, my PowerPoint? Today, I will touch upon the, um, the challenges of uh, the uterine fibroids and adenomyosis, uh, in, especially in, in infertility field. So the uh, challenges of uh, uterine uh, fibroids and adenomyosis in fertility uh, management. The uh, fibroid-related infertility as following. First, it will increase the uterine contractility and also the impair the blood supply in the endometrium and the myometrium. And also, uh, this fibroid will uh, cause uterine cavity distortion and a thicker capsule and also they can impair the endometrial receptibility and the gene expression. And finally, the hormone of paracrine uh, changes uh, such as cytokine also increase. According to the FIGO uh, lyomyoma subclassification, you can see uh, from zero to eight. So that means some are uh, uh, some mucous myoma, intramural, and two subcellosa. And the degree, uh, it depends on the how much involved uh, the intramural. So there's one or one and two, the difference. And there are some uh, systemic review of the uh, uh, uterine fibroid for all locations of the uterine fibroid. No doubt that will decrease. You can see the relative risk is much less uh, in the clinical pregnancy rate implantation rate and ongoing lipose rate. So or a compromise in patients with all location myoma. And at the same time, you see the spontaneous miscarriage rate also increase. However, when the myoma is located in the submucous area, you even see the worsen uh, uh, in patient to, in, in respect to the pregnancy implantation and ongoing pregnancy rate. So the relative, relative risk of even uh, higher in those patients. So how to manage, how the strategy to manage this uh, uterine fibroid? I think we can use different approaches such as uterine up, uh, artery embolization or through vagina or through catheterization. Or you, you, use, uh, you can, we can use hysterectomy by laparoscopic approaches or hysteroscopic approaches. Or you can, we can use a uh, MR guide, uh, uh, focus uh, uterine surgery or HIFU uh, forever. And for the intramural uh, myoma, type three, four, five, and six, if the size is less than three centimeter in diameter, we can uh, weight, so such as expectant management. If the size of uterine fibroids are greater than three centimeter in di diameter, we can uh, use the medical treatment up to three to six months. Uh, this is to try to uh, decrease the myoma size and induce migration of the myoma as far as possible away from endometrium. So, uh, you can, uh, so if the size diminishes, we can uh, do the natural conception or IVF. However, if no reduction, then the surgery is recommended. 
Then they will look at our hospital in a couple of years. We collect about 224 patients doing the history of fibroscope. We can see about 132 patients, which is 58% with abnormal uterine cavity, with some abnormal pathology, okay? So, and then we further analysis this 132 patients, and then they, uh, some are polyps, uterine synechia, septal uterus, but about around 9% are due to some mucus, some mucosa myoma. However, uh, after treatment, you can achieve about 33% pregnancy rate. Then I will share one case. This is some mucosa myoma type 1. That means majority is location in the uterine cavity, 35 years old, secondary infertility, and with some mucosa myoma. So you can see here the size, okay, the size of uterine uh, some mucosa myoma around 2 centimeters. So you can see the big some mucosa myoma. So we can use uh, the hysteroscope to remove this uh, some mucosa myoma. And then two months after, uh, one month after second look, you can see still there's some residual, okay, residual intramural uh, uh, during the second look uh, laparoscopic uh, examination. So again, I remove this one. Uh, it is, uh, uh, one month later, and then after the third look, almost gone, you see, and my, the, some, the some mucosa myoma turned out to be intramural, so, so almost cream, almost cream in the uterine uh, cavity. Again, uh, about uh, three months later, the patient received uh, this received the intrauterine insemination with chromate and the gonadotrophin dual trigger. And finally, by IUI or AIH, she had a baby. No need for uh, IVF. The other case is multiple some mucous myoma, you can see here. So still two stage approaches. The first one removed the majority of the fibroid. And then the second look, still two, Small, uh, some mucous myoma remain. Uh, again, you can see the tortures, the uh, blood vessel uh, on the surface of the myoma. So you can see why the patient are uh, easy to get bleeding. Again, the second look and remove it. So finally, almost clean. And the patient had two pregnancies uh, and had two babies. And this is more complicated. You can see the tortuous, uh, vigorous uh, vessels, continuous breathing, uh, and this size around three centimeters uh, during the laparoscopic uh, examination. So again, I did the uh, remove this uh, some mucus my, my laparoscopic approach. So you can see here, just use electro. This is a uh, flexible laparoscopic uh, removal of the, so you can cut the majority of the some mucus myoma and the remain small portion of the myoma in the uh, intramural uh, portion. Quite big, yeah. Okay, so the, the second look, you can see almost all the blood vessels are shrink. And then uh, because the, we uh, disconnect the blood supply, it turned out to be smaller and with pale and in appearance. And then you can remove easily for the second look. And after uh, two or three months, you see almost cream, and the some um, mucosa uh, myoma subside. And again, uh, for those patients with uh, intramural myoma, this is another second case. Uh, this is uh, in the 33 years old uh, women, and 
she had a spontaneous pregnancy three months after myomectomy. So you can see this is a big three centimeter by seven centimeter in size. So uh, multiple myoma, and then we can do a myomectomy and she conceived spontaneous three months after the surgery. So this is another uh, intramural myoma, a 30 years old lady, primary for three years, multiple intramural myoma, and she failed IVF once. And again, you can see, this is a big uh, uh, anterior myoma, posterior, and also this inside this fibroid, there are some cystic degeneration. So you can see after remove, you can open the mouth like cystic degeneration here. And after the surgery, uh, she, uh, I think the surgery is in, in, in I think is in February, okay? So uh, four months later, she conceived. We can see last, last week, she came back with early gestational, uh, gestational sac uh, in ultrasound examination. So the management strategy for uterine fibroid, we are we have surgical surgical approaches or non-surgical alternatives such as uterine artery embolization or HIFU or MAC, uh, MR guide uh, focused surgery. And also we have different uh, um, management by medical uh, treatment. Uh, you can use uh, transamine uh, or IOD. Uh, projecting a coated IUD or selective projection uh, receptor modulator, IU486 or GNRH agonist antagonist. The majority of the advantage is try to reduce heavy menstrual breathing or shrink the fibroid or, or, or uh, correct the anemia. But still, there are some disadvantages. For example, when you use the projection uh, receptor modulator, uh, sometimes, according to the Jack Donnay's uh, publication, associated with some endometrial changes, so-called PACES. So still, it's very cautious. And also, when you use the agonist or antagonist, still the patient can develop the bone marrow uh, density loss. So, uh, and again, now uh, they have some oral GNRS antagonists available now. But uh, be aware uh, in the recent publication from New England Journal of Medicine, when you, we do the uterine artery embolization versus myomectomy, again, the myomectomy had a better fibroid related quality of life. So you can see here this myomectomy, this uterine artery embolization, and this is a uh, uh, quality of life measurement, the questionnaire after two years, the higher the better quality of life. So again, you can see patient receive myomectomy, the satisfaction rate is much better, is better than uh, artery, uh, uterine artery embolization. Now I will switch to the uh, adenomyosis and the ART. Uh, you can see here in patient uh, with adenomyosis, this is the foci uh, in the, uh, the tissue, you can see they are longevity, 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 longevity genes highly expressed, of which is 62. So this is why patients with the adenomas are not easy to be cured because the gene, they can survive longer. And then what is the uh, mechanism that impairs the fertility potential in patients with adenomas? Because, because local hyper the increased estrogen, and this is increased uh, estrogen can increase the peristalsis of the adenomyosis, and also induction of the tissue injury and repair, so-called TIAR, in the junction zone. And this, uh, at the same time, uh, the adenomyosis also, uh, they can down regulation of those implantation genes, such as FOX, FOXO1A or HASA10 integrin, as well as the leaf uh, uh, protein. And besides, they also increase the, uh, the microphage MCP1 natural killer cell 
and the CD are 60. All these will impair the implantation. And then uh, we try to examine our patient. You can see here, this is the endometrial gland with hemorrhagic opening. You can see during the uh, hysteroscope, you can see the hemorrhage spot opening on the surface of the endometrium of adenomyosis. This is why those patients are not easy to get pregnant. This continuous breeding and breeding. So the embryo is not easy to implant. So you have to cure this uh, pathology. And the image studying of adenomyosis, as you know, the MRI is much better than tra traditional vaginal ultrasound because the area under curve is 0 0.9 in MRI compared with the 0 0.8 in transvaginal ultrasound. So the correct diagnosis was easy to obtain and more often uh, with MRI. So you can see the MRI is very easy to appreciate this widespread uh, thickening of the junction zone with uh, uh, numerous high signal foci and the loss of the definition in the endometrial margin. So it's more easy to, to be diagnosed by MRI rather than uh, transvaginal ultrasound. And there are numerous uh, publications try to explain, especially for patients with uh, IVF in patients with adenomyosis, they have decreased the ongoing pregnancy rate. So you can see here, there are three publications and this uh, blue bar is adenomyosis. Okay, so equally, the pregnancy, ongoing pregnancy rate is suppressed compared with control. See, see the control with much higher pregnancy rate compared with adenomyosis. So uh, we have must do something for those patients. However, when patients receive uh, down regulation uh, with GNRH or so-called pretreatment with prolonged uh, GNRH treatment in these two publications, you can see the pregnancy rate is almost, almost identical with the control group. So that's very obvious and clear. GNRH pretreatment may do some beneficial effect to those patients with adenomyosis for IVF. So we have one patient, uh, she's 40 years old, secondary infertility for 10 years. She had anemia because the big uh, adenomyosis and the severe with uh, antiphospholipid syndrome because a, ban a bunch of antibodies and she, her uh, CA125 is very high, about 576. However, she reduced the CA125 level to 34 after two months of the GNR uh, pretreatment. So you can see here, this is before GNH, the size is very big. You can see the, the size of uterus is 9.9, .9, very big. However, after two, two months treatment, reduce the size to seven by six. So you can see the tremendous effect of GNH. And then uh, we have some pilot study. We collect 10 patients, okay, 10 patients, age range from 39 to 40. And you can see the CA, uh, CA125 level before GNH, very high, 100, 200. After GNH return, almost return normal range, you can see about 31, 20 again. And in addition, when you look at the uh, uterine size, before GNH is very big, and after GN, they reduce 63%, 29%, 70%. So you can see the tremendous reduction of the uh, uterine size after GNH, uh, one or two months treatment, and four of them get pregnant, conceived. Then we do the uh, following study. We collect uh, 36 uh, patients, uh, received long uh, treatment. That means uh, one or two months, uh, GNH, the other seven with antagonist treatment. The only difference is the outcome. You can see for long group, you can see the clinical pregnancy about 37, 36%, uh, but implantation, 
an ongoing pres- and also ongoing pregnancy rate of seven twenty eight percent. When you look at the antagonist group, almost zero pregnancies. And then because I think age is very essential, a contributing factors to pregnancy rate. So again, we look divide those thirty six patients two groups, age under thirty eight and age over thirty eight. So with sixteen is the younger patient. 20 is a little bit old patient. The only difference is pregnancy rate. You can see uh, when younger patient, you can have clinical pregnancy of 5, 6%, implantation 25, ongoing pregnancy 50% compared with the uh, uh, age over uh, 38. So age is important uh, uh, for adenomyosis. And what is the uh, potential mechanism of the direct effect of GNH on adenomyosis? Five reasons. Five, uh, number one is the GNH, they can reduce tumor size by down regulation of the TJ beta. Also, they inhibit inflammation by diminished IL-1 and the induction of the apoptosis by suppression of the uh, BCL2 or increase the BAX gene. And the f- number four is oxidative stress. When they receive the GNH treatment, oxidative stress much less because the NO uh, also diminished. The finally, uh, the angiogenesis also diminished because the, all the VGF are totally suppressed by this uh, treatment. And again, a couple of years ago, we published a paper in fertility sterility. For those patients with uterine glioma, also the GNH agonist prolonged treatment also they can suppress uh, all those genes such as mark kinase, uh, VGF, or uh, uh, some inflammatory uh, gene, proliferative gene, etc. So the mechanism of the GNH for the uterine glioma, glioma is very similar to adenomyosis. And then uh, you can appreciate, see the uh, for long term uh, pituitary uh, tongue regulation before the frozen embryo transfer, why we also could improve the pregnancy outcome in women with adenomyosis. So you can see tongue regulation first, and then frozen embryo transfer. You can receive, you can appreciate the preg- implantation rate is much better than uh, control clinical pregnancy. 51, 22 for control, and ongoing also about 49%. So tongue regulation, very, very important. And again, some meta-analysis, you can see uh, a lot of uh, uh, publications showing the clinical pregnancy rate is much, much compromised in adenomyosis compared with uh, control, you can see. The uh, clinical pregnancy only 0.2. And uh, besides, they increase the miscarriage rate. You can see here in patients with adenomyosis, the miscarriage rate is around two times higher. You can see two times higher in patients with adenomyosis compared with the, the control. So uh, again, for those patients, if the CA125 is big and it is high and big adenoma. Sometimes radical resection of adenomyoma tissue is, is necessary. And Dr. Osuda, they already developed a so called trip, uh, triple FREP methods. The first one is cut the uh, uterus, uh, entering the uterine cavity, and remove the both sides adenoma t- tissue and carefully the meticulously repair the endometrium, and then uh, triple FREP method to repair. The, the the uterine uh, the uterine uh, myometrium, and most important is after the surgery. You see, we we are uh, usually do a second look, uh, lab uh, hysteroscopy. You can see still some residual adenomyosis here, so you still need uh, some surgery or need a GNH uh, following treatment to remove, and then the patient can have the pregnancies, and. So that is the uh, successful pregnancy after conservative surgery for uh, morbid or malignant adenomyosis 
So you can see the after the surgery, there are variable apprentice outcome from 16% to 6%. But however, there's a large group from Japan. You can see 100, 100 patients and pregnancy rate can reaching 41% if age under 40 still age is very important. However, only 3% if age over 40. So again, you can see uh, the, the importance of the age and the, uh, and the probably size and the pre-treatment or not, with GNRH or not. So for those patients with poor responders, sometimes we consider this tongue regulation, the side effect. So again, uh, we can use the uh, segmental IVA approach or adenomalmectomy. So it depends on uh, the patient's situation, depend on whether the patient is normal responder or poor responder. So that's the final diagram for IVF in adenomyosis. If the patient or patient should receive GNRH tongue regulation, if the GNRH return to normal, they can we can do IVF or side retrieval and do embryo transfer fresh. However, for severe adenomyosis, for poor responders, then we choose segmental IVF. So that means we do the overhand stimulation and the egg retrieval first, and then tongue regulation of the patient with the GNRH until the, the GCA125 less than 35, then we do frozen embryo transfer. However, if the CA125 is still big and the size is still more than 10 centimeters, then we, in between, we select adenomyomectomy. And then, and then a tongue regulation and the frozen embryo transfer. Okay, so that's my last slide. I was thank my collaboration across the Taiwan, the whole island, uh, with my previous uh, physician resistant fellow and my lab and so on. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Professor Chiri, for an excellent lecture as usual. So we'd like to uh, open the floor for questions. Uh, please type your questions in the chat box. And let me fire the first question, Professor Chiri. You've discussed hysteroscopy uh, prior to uh, natural conception, uh, AI, or even a frozen embryo transfer. How do you prevent intrauterine adhesions uh, from occurring after hysteroscopic procedure? Uh, <clears throat> usually, uh, for because only 10% of the infertile patients have some pathology. So 90% is normal. So usually I do routine uh, office. Okay, office is just go with three milli, uh, mini, uh, millimeters uh, fiberscope to see, to see without anesthesia. So three minutes, you can examine the whole uh, cavity. So 90% will be okay. But 10% with some uterine um, pathology. So, uh, Usually, we, we need to uh, do the uh, septum uh, resection or polyp removal or the semiglossal myoma uh, uh, removal. You, you can use the you know, yellow barrier on the gel to prevent uh, uh, adhesion, but the most important is technique. Uh, you, if you're meticulous, uh, careful technique, uh, usually there's no uh, adhesion, just I show you in my my, my slide. You don't know, but if you are very concerned for adhesion, you can use the gel arrow barrier to to prevent adhesion. Okay, thank you. We have a question here from Mr. Qatar Iraqi Husseini. What is the posology of GNRH? Uh, I presume he was referring to uh, how much would you give uh, for a segmented IVF? Or uh, in contrast, or an ultra long protocol that will allow you to improve your pregnancy rate. Very good questions. Okay, normally the patient receive two months. That's more than enough because after two, even the patient CA one twenty five is very big, more than two hundred, three hundred. After two shot, two months, usually you can see the down regulation of CA one twenty five less than thirty five. So. There are two criteria. One, if the patient, the 
the uh, uterine size reduced to uh, to to uh, thirty to forty to sixty percent, then you can perceive IVF or the CA one twenty five ten uh, come down goes down to thirty five. You can go for IVF. If the patient, the uterine size, the adenoma is still very big, more than ten centimeter in diameter. Second, CA one twenty five cannot go down to thirty five. Then we consider yeah. adenoma mastectomy. So adenoma to me, usually it's the last option. The first option is try to medical treatment, GNRH pre-treatment. And 90% of patients, no more than two months, yeah, believe me, they will shrink. And you see the size, uh, shrink about 60%, so easy to, to, to do the IVF or, or use IUI or do the natural conception. Thank you. Uh, what about uh, when do you start HRT for segmental IV IVF? After two months, we don't wait for period because the period does not arrive after two months of GnRH. Yes, yes. Uh, after two months, you see uh, normal CA125, the uterine size shrink to about six centimeter in diameter. Then you can apply the uh, HRT for H24, and then uh, usually the pregnancy rate is very high. That's good. So we have another question from uh, Olaric. Hello, Olaric. Do we need GnRH agonist after adenomyomectomy? Uh, will that be Olaric? Will that be a uh, please? Yes, agonist uh, for IVF or for segmental? How would that be? Okay, after adenomyomectomy, um, adenoma usually I do routine hysteroscope to see if there's any adhesion or because sometimes we go into the uterine cavity. So you can create some adhesion or some residual, you know, as just you, there are some endometrial adenoma openings in the endometrium. So the subsequently GNH for about one or two months is necessary for adenoma metonymy. The second reason, uh, opinion, uh, reason is usually after three months, the uterine enough time to heal. So please do not, please wait until three months after surgery, do any kind of IUI or do embryo transfer, et cetera. Three months is, is very important. Okay, thank you very much. That was extensively discussed and we've had a very fruitful uh, Q&A.